In this video I'm going to show you how to take apart a Freechrome network drive, how it looks from the inside and how it works. The Freechrome drive is a network storage device with two interfaces, an Ethernet interface and USB interface. To open the Freecom drive, you have to remove the warranty seal at the bottom of the device. Behind the seal there is a screw, uh, the other four screws are located behind the rubber feet. Now we are ready to push the inside outside, and here you can see the hard disk. You can see that I also removed the front and back of the device, but that isn't really necessary. A metal plate hides some interesting components. You can see here that it's a SATA hard drive and it's connected to the print inside. All the power supply components are on this side of the print as well as all the connectors. Now let's detach the hard drive by loosening these four screws. You can now detach the print by loosening another four screws and unplug the power connector. Here's a more clear picture of the top side of the print. Here at the bottom of the print there are some components you might want to know. First the reset switch and uh, next to the reset switch there's a power connector, the USB connector and the Ethernet connector. And here on the, on the right there are some wires. Uh, those wires go to the status LEDs in front of the device. Me, you know the the, the one uh, to see if there's a link, if the system is going up, uh, and the, the the power LED, which tells you how big the device is. In this case, uh, 500 gigabytes. Okay. Uh, over here, you can see the Ethernet chip. By the way, I have a close-up photo for each chip that is uh, printed on this overview of the bottom print. This is the Ethernet chip. And here on the close-up photo you can see the serial number of the and the type of the chip. Although for this particular chip I was unable to find a uh, data sheet or a brand. Well, maybe you can. Uh, let's, let's move to the ne next chip. This is a fast USB to PETA bridge chip. And this chip will convert the USB di data to the, the, the PETA bridge, which can be used yeah, for the microprocessor. Up close, you can see that is the GM20335. Next. I noticed two chips of the s on the same kind there. Um, those are of the type the CL245A, but there are multiple components with the same name, so I was unable to determine what what the purpose of those chips are. Let's move to the next part. What do you think about that big one over there? That must be important, right? Ah, it is the IDE controller. Strange, because I don't have an IDE controller attached. Maybe it was used in an earlier version of this drive. Um, but where is the SATA controller? Ah, it's over there. The SATA controller is of the type GM20330. And there's also flash memory. This chip over here is the Eon EN29LVX. 
800 BB. You can look it up on the internet. And here's a screenshot of the PDF page. Next, I also found an SD RAM chip with 64 megabytes of memory. Woo! And this chip is the AORAX EM484 M1644 VTA. You can find it on the webpage of AORAX. And finally, the last chip remaining, it's the very core of the print, it's the microprocessor. And this microprocessor is the RDC2891. I did a search of the RDC2891 and I found some source code with RTOS, Real Time Operating System. I checked the hard drive for data. It has a FAT32 file system. Maybe you are looking for a print like this to make your own real-time operating system. Did you notice these connectors? These connectors may be related to JTAG. Originally, I was looking for a serial interface to connect to the operating system. Maybe it's possible with these connectors. And maybe there's enough hardware to install BusyBox. I hope you enjoyed watching.